Joining us now, National Security Council Strategic Communications Coordinator John Kirby. Admiral, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you, Mike. Thanks. Let's start in Ukraine, your former specialty being a former Pentagon spokesman. Uh, is the goal to wear out the Russians or to defeat them? The goal is to make sure that Ukraine can continue to defend itself and can defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. And you heard the president talk about this at NATO just a few days ago. We don't need, we don't want to see Ukraine defeated by Russia. And that's why we are continuing to rush aid and assistance. Now, more than $7 billion worth of assistance. That's just from the United States alone to Ukraine. There are concerns this war could drag on. Most expect that a negotiated yeah. settlement will be required to end it. Is it time for the president of the United States to push the Russians and the Ukrainians to the negotiating table. It's time for the United States to continue to support Ukraine, and that's what we're doing. Uh, Mr. Zelensky, President Zelensky, he gets to determine um, how victory is decided and when and on what terms. Um, and what we're, we're going to do is continue to make sure that he can succeed on the battlefield so that he can succeed at the table. But even President Zelensky will tell you uh, the time is not now for those discussions. And certainly President Putin has shown no indication that he's interested in negotiated talks. In fact, quite the contrary. He continues to not only uh, lash out in the Donbass, but uh, conducts airstrikes now in places like Kyiv. Do you worry that the rules of engagement are too restrictive for the Ukrainians, and do you worry about a stalemate? The Ukrainians are fighting really bravely and skillfully, Mike, and they're not only uh, working to defend territory, and they have done a noble job of that. Uh, they're going on the counteroffensive. There were press reports this morning that they that they struck back in Melitopol. Melitopol, as you might recall, is a town they lost several weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They're striking back. So they have been willing to go on a counteroffensive. I can't speak to Ukrainian rules of engagement on the battlefield, but I can tell you that they are fighting bravely, skillfully, and quite, uh, quite creatively. Okay, President Biden tweeted last night, my message to the companies running gas stations and setting prices at the pump is simple. This is a time of war and global peril. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you're paying for the product and do it now. Jeff Bezos tweeted late last night, ouch. Inflation is far too important a problem for the White House to keep making statements like this. It's either straight ahead misdirection or a deep misunderstanding of basic market dynamics. How do you respond? It's neither, not, not in terms of President Biden's view. I mean, uh, the American people are facing pain at the pump clearly. Now we're, what, $5 a gallon. And the president is working very, very hard across many fronts, Mike, to try to bring that price down. At the G7, working on trying to develop a, a price cap on Russian oil, uh, asking Congress to support a three-month holiday for the, the gas tax, um, uh, and, of course, uh, releasing now a million barrels of oil out of the strategic, a record number of uh, barrels of oil out of our strategic reserve to try to bring that price down. He knows that, that, that get, that's not going to solve all the problems, but it'll help. If everybody cooperates on this, we could bring the price down at least by about a dollar a gallon. Uh, so he's working very, very hard to do this because he knows the impact that high gas prices have on the American household. Mr. is a pretty serious allegation from a business mogul who happens to be the owner of the Washington Post. I, I think the, anybody that knows President President Biden knows he's plain spoken and he tells you exactly what he's thinking and in, in, in terms that everybody can understand. So I think we obviously take great exception at the idea that this is somehow misdirection. The president is speaking honestly with the, uh, honestly with the American people uh, about the, uh, what he's trying to do to bring the prices down. But he was honest even before the invasion, Mike, about the fact that it would not be cost free, certainly not cost free to President Putin, but it wouldn't be cost free to the American people to stand up for democracy, just stand up for Ukraine's ability to defend it. Itself. He's expected to travel overseas to meet with leaders in the Middle East to talk about gasoline prices. There's been some criticism about potentially meeting with the Saudis because he's called them a pariah state. Let's play it. I guess I will see the, the king and the crown prince, but that's, that's not the meeting I'm going to. They'll be part of a much larger meeting. I'm not going to ask. I'm going to ask There's the, all the Gulf states are meeting. I indicated to them that I thought they should be increasing oil production generically, not to the Saudis particularly. Does it matter if he discusses oil production with the Saudis individually or in a group meeting? The president's going to the Gulf Cooperation Council. 
That's the purpose for this trip. The Saudi is the host of the GCC, uh, and they have led the GC uh, quite well. Um, and the president's looking forward to a range of topics that we have to discuss. E energy is going to be on the agenda, of course, and you heard the president. And he'll talk about uh, energy security in the context of the GCC. He'll have a bilateral discussion uh, with, uh, with the king and, and the king's leadership team. But there's an awful lot on this agenda, Mike, that we can't forget. And clearly, energy is an important global issue right now. Now the president understands that, but so is terrorism. So is the war in Yemen. We're now on a second extension of a ceasefire in Yemen that the United States, you know, helped with our engagement, help, uh, helped uh, get us that uh, through the Saudis. Mm -hmm. um, there's... Uh, and then, of course, there's, uh, you know, there's the issue of climate change. There's a lot going on in the GCC that the president's looking forward to discussing. We follow up. Can you confirm no one-on-one -on -one meetings with the king or crown prince or, or even a pull aside? The president will have a bilateral discussion with the uh, King Salman and his leadership team. And of course, the crown prince is on that leadership team. So as you heard the president say, he certainly expects that he'll be seeing the crown prince in the context of that bilateral discussion. Okay. Do you worry that countries in the Middle East may, na may not be willing or may not be able to increase production to impact prices here at home? Well, I don't want to get ahead of the agenda and what they're going to decide uh, at the GCC meeting. I would just note, Mike, that, the, that already um, uh, there has, OPEC has um, increased by 50% previously scheduled increases for July and August. So going into the rest of the summer, uh, they've already increased again by half planned increases for oil production. And we'll see what happens, you know, a as a result of this meeting and, and where and where things go. The president understands that, you know, increased oil production can help, which is another reason why, again, he's tapped into our strategic reserve a, a million uh, barrels a, a day. But there's an awful lot that goes into energy security that isn't just about oil production. And again, the president's looking forward to having that discussion. The president spoke this week about inflation. Let's play it. I can understand why the American people are frustrated because of inflation. But inflation is higher in almost every other country. Prices of the pump are higher in almost every other country. We're better positioned to deal with this than anyone, but we have a way to go. But let's take a look at inflation numbers for major economies. There are many with inflation lower than the U.S. And as of May, average inflation in G7 countries is lower than it is in the U.S., are we in a better position to deal with inflation? The American economy is incredibly strong. I mean, we're still at 3.6 unemployment uh, under President Biden's leadership now. In just the first year, 9 million more jobs were added. Uh, that is not an economy that's in a recession. Uh, and the president's right. We have the foundational elements here in the American economy to weather through this and to, and to come through it uh, strongly and, and good on the outside, on the, on the other end of it. The president also made headlines in Spain criticizing the Supreme Court. Let's play that. The one thing that has been destabilizing is the outrageous behavior of the Supreme Court of the United States on overruling not only Roe v. Wade, but essentially challenging the right to privacy. We've been a leader in the world in terms of personal rights and privacy rights. Is that appropriate on the world stage? The president was answering a, an honest and fair question from a reporter, an American reporter, I might add, in that press conference. Uh, and so he, he said it, uh, answered it in exactly the same way, same tone, same tenor, um, that, uh, that he spoke about the decision, the Dobbs decision, when it was announced, when it, when it came out. Um, so he was very consistent with what he said before. Uh, but he was answering a question from a reporter, Mike. He was actually up there at NATO uh, to talk about the accomplishments of the summit, which were significant. You know, the potential now accession of Sweden and Finland, which will change the alliance uh, forever. Um, the inclusion of global partnerships at the NATO uh, alliance. The first time we had Australia, Japan, South Korea at a NATO summit. Um, and then, of course, the continued support to, to Ukraine and a strategic concept. The first one in 12 years, mind you, that not only talks about the threat that Russia poses to European and transatlantic security, but also mentions China and the challenges posed by China first time. So there was a wide ranging press conference. He answered a, a question honestly and fairly, and he used the same exact terms uh, about his disappointment in the Supreme Court's decision as he did right here at home before he left. Let's talk about basketball star Brittany Griner. She's on trial in Russia, could potentially face 10 years in Russian prison. Her wife has expressed some frustration. Do you trust that the maximum amount of effort is being put forward to, to bring BG home? 
No, I don't. And and I hate to say that because I do trust that they the the persons working on this are very genuine people that I do believe. Um, but I don't think the maximum amount of effort is being done. Any plans for the president to meet with her? And is a possible prisoner swap up for discussion? I don't have anything on the president's schedule to speak to today. I can tell you that he is very much engaged in this, and he has been engaged with the team uh, that is not only in direct communication with Ms. Greiner, but also working very, very hard uh, to get her released. I mean, she needs to come home. It's, 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 it's past time. Um, the United States government is very, very focused on her case, as it is on uh, the cases of other unjustly and wrongfully detained Americans uh, around the world. Uh, and this is something that the president takes very, very seriously. Uh, remain in Mexico policy. The Supreme Court says you guys can wind it down. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the Supreme Court or the policy. I know that's not your specialty, but broadly, are you concerned about the impact at the border, which is already facing very difficult times? Uh, we, uh, uh, we believe uh, that this remain in Mexico co policy was, was inhumane, and it actually forced uh, people that were applying for asylum to then go back to uh, deplorable conditions, unsafe conditions, uh, and to face the potential for further violence, uh, at being pushed back uh, into Mexico like that the way. So look, we're, we're working our way through the Supreme Court's decision. I won't get ahead of de decisions here, but we welcome, uh, we welcome this decision, uh, and, and we're, we're going to be working hard here on what the next steps are going to be. What about the humanitarian crisis at the border? Just this week, we saw more than 50 migrants killed in a tractor trailer. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, that's deplorable. And I would, uh, you know, uh, make a couple of points here. Number one, uh, under President Biden's leadership now, we have really gone after uh, human traffickers and smugglers. I mean, more than 2,400 arrests uh, just to date since April, since we started this. Um, and then look at the summit of the Americas when the president was out in Los Angeles just a couple of weeks ago for the first time getting more than 20 heads of state from the region to sign up to a migration declaration that for the first time, Mike, actually considers the, the root causes of a regional of a regional focus here, what's causing, uh, for whether it's uh, economically, uh, uh, politically, uh, or or socially, the root causes of causing this uh, of these migrants to flow north uh, into Mexico and put pressure on the Mexican government. So for the first time now, uh, leaders across the region are going to take a holistic approach to try to get at those root causes to stop these migrants. Last one. What about your new role at the White House? Some people see you as perhaps a co-White House press secretary. <laughs> How do you respond? No, no, no. Kareem, Kareem is the press secretary. I, I'm just I'm at the National Security Council and uh, I'm just trying to help uh, with the coordination of uh, some of the comms efforts. And um, it's a great honor and a privilege to, to be given this opportunity. And I'm very much excited about it. Admiral John Kirby, thank you for your service. Thank you for your time this Independence Day weekend. Thank you. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.